I'm out here in my local park and boy, I'm really lost. So I'm gonna show you how to survive and get back home in case you ever get lost. Now the first key to getting home is making sure you have the right gear. A lot of people when they go out for a day hike they might bring some water, maybe a light stack, but there are definitely some other things you're going to want to have on you to keep you safe and get you through an unexpected situation. Let's talk about what I have in my day hiking pack here. Let's go ahead and open it up and what you're going to see first of all is I have extra water always want to bring extra water because even if you only plan on being out for an hour or two you never know what's gonna happen and you could always end up needing extra water so step one is definitely gonna be extra water now the next thing that I have on me is some form of communication obviously you want to make sure your cell phone is charged but a lot of times you might be in an area where you have cell phone signal at the parking lot but then once you actually get in and start hiking you find you no longer have cell phone signal so I have this Garmin InReach Mini. This device right here is really excellent. It allows me to get a hold of somebody no matter where in the world I am. Of course, make sure it's charged, but some form of communication is gonna be key. You always wanna make sure you're able to find help if you need it. Now, the other thing that I carry on me is gonna be some extra bug spray and sunscreen. And that's just so that I can keep myself from getting sunburned or fit if I'm out a lot longer than I'm expecting to be. The next thing that I keep on me are gonna be some extra snacks. Now, this is really important because while you plan on only being out for a certain amount of time, you might bring enough food and water for the time that you plan on being out. When people end up being out a lot longer than they're expecting to be, this is where problems occur. And this is where people really start to have troubles and get lost. When you get tired and your blood sugar levels start to go down, you start to make really bad decisions. So it's important to have enough food on you to sustain yourself for a lot longer than you're expecting to so that you can continue to make good decisions. Now the next item that I have is going to be a first aid kit. You don't need a massively large first aid kit such as you might use if you're going on like an overnight camping trip. Just something with some uh, bandages and some gauze and maybe a splint. Just enough really to clean up some wounds and help you get back to your car so that you can go and get the medical help that you need. The next thing that I have on me are just going to be some basics, some uh, tissue, maybe a little bit of soap to clean some wounds, a trash bag, which can help waterproof things as well as uh, keep your gear not only dry, but also help you collect all your trash. You don't want to be leaving band-aids and things laying around on the trail. So just a few trash bags can help out as well. I also have a pack towel that I keep on me. Uh, this pack towel here, uh, not really sure what it is I guess gear to summit uh, but this pocket towel I like to keep on me it'll help dry me off if I happen to fall into a creek or something and I'm getting really wet I can get cold really fast and having a towel to dry off is gonna be something really nice that'll help prevent hypothermia now in addition to that I also have a few forms of flashlights here I have a spare headlamp and then I also have a separate flashlight that I keep on me as well the reason for this is a lot of times you're going to be out and it's going to be a lot later than you're expecting to be out. Uh, you might only plan on being out for a couple hours. Maybe you plan on getting home while the sun's still up. But if you get injured, you can't walk or you get lost and you end up being out a lot longer than you're expecting to be, having those flashlights is going to be crucial. Now the next important piece of gear that I have is a compass. The compass is really, really important. Even if don't know how to do land navigation that's fine having a compass can keep you going in the same direction especially out in a wooded area like this one of the biggest mistakes people make is they end up running around in circles and they're just walking in circles hitting the same location over and over again a compass can keep you heading in one single direction now uh, talking about a compass there's two ways to avoid getting lost in the first place and a lot of people think that if you get lost you're just gonna end up getting lost because you're in a new area, maybe you're staying at a hotel and you decide to head out into the local city park or Yellowstone Park or something like that, some area that you're unfamiliar with and that's how you end up getting lost. But the reality is 
a lot of times it happens to locals. Just a few months ago here in Colorado, there were two hikers who had gone out to the same area they'd been out a hundred times before and a wildlife officer met them and said, hey, we have a snowstorm coming through. Are you guys prepared? Are you sure you want to head out today? He said, oh yeah, we're good. We're prepared. We got our coats. We're ready to go. We've been out there a hundred times. We know what we're doing. We're fine. Four hours later, that same exact wildlife officer got a phone call that two hikers were out and they had gotten lost. And what ended up happening is a snowstorm came in, it was whiteout conditions, they lost track of where they were, they ended up getting lost and they had to call for help. Now, they did not have cell phone signal where they were at, but luckily they did have one of these Garmin Enrich Minis and they were able to call for help. The wildlife officer said this is pretty much the only thing that they did right. They did not mark where their vehicle was on their cell phone. They did not have a compass. They had no way to actually find their way back. So in a minute, we'll talk about how to actually use your phone and your compass to actually find your way back so you don't get lost. First, let me show you the rest of the gear that's in the bag. The next thing that I have is some f way to actually start a fire. Now, this is a lighter. It's uh, some cheap Chinese lighter, but you know what? It works just fine. You click it, you'll get your spark, you'll be able to start a lighter. If for any reason this thing fails, I'm not able to start a fire with this. I do have one of the uh, ferro rods, which can create some sparks and help me start a fire as well. The reason that you want to be able to start a fire, even if you're a local in your city park, is because if you're out a lot later than you're expecting to be, it might be really warm when you start your hike, but then as the nighttime starts to hit, those temperatures can drop rapidly. And you might have a jacket in your backpack, which I would also recommend you carry. But if you, even if you have that jacket, those nighttime temperatures can drop so much, the jacket's not gonna be enough to keep you warm. So having a way to start a fire and keep warm while you're waiting for rescue to come and find you and extract you is gonna be really, really crucial. Another thing that I use to help keep me warm are gonna be these Mylar blankets. These are extremely lightweight. And what they do is they can help keep your body heat in. So in an emergency situation, I can take this Mylar blanket out. I can wrap it around my body. If I do need to start a fire, I can hang one of these on the opposite side of the fire between, so it's me and then the fire and then the Mylar blanket. And that'll help reflect a lot of that heat back onto me, keeping me a lot warmer than just having the fire by itself. So these little Mylar blankets are great for keeping you warm at nighttime when you're not prepared to actually be out at night. Next thing that I have in my pack is just a little multi-tool. This is just some cheap one that I got off of Amazon. It's your typical multi-tool, pliers, a few knives, screwdrivers. It has a saw on it and a rope cutter, just basic things that you might need to actually cut some firewood and get yourself going to get you through the night. Also, if you're out on a bicycle or snowmobiling or anything like that, you might have to make some minor repairs. So having a multi-tool is really great. Now, the one thing that I do not have in my pack is a large knife. I don't have a big bushcraft knife or anything like that. I do have some everyday carry items and that is gonna be my everyday carry knife. It's just a pocket knife, a uh, simple folder, nothing extreme or uh, crazy about it. Just a really simple knife. This knife is all I really need to actually build that fire and get that kindling going so that I can stay warm. And a knife can also be great if you need to cut any gauze or anything to help yourself get through an injury. A knife is great for that as well. And of course, there's a knife on the multi-tool, which I could use, but for me, since I carry this every day anyway, just having this on me works. And that's it. Those are all I really need to have on me for a day hike. I see a lot of people come out here, all they carry is a water bottle and that's it. And that's great so long as nothing goes wrong. But if you do happen to get injured or you do happen to get lost and you end up sitting out here for many hours, a lot longer than you're expecting to, having all this emergency gear is gonna be crucial. Now the other piece of emergency gear that I keep on me that I forgot to talk about is a whistle. I have a whistle attached to my backpack and a whistle attached to my flashlight since they're kind of emergency gear type things. And 
what a whistle can do for you is first of all, if you need help and you don't have a way of communicating, say your cell phone's dead, you don't have something like a satellite communicator on you and you need to get help, a whistle can help you get attention of nearby people. You can whistle a lot longer than you can yell. And in order to get somebody's attention, the universal call for distress is three blows on the whistle. So a or a either one of those will get people's attention and will get you the help that you need. Now, if you do end up getting lost and you do have to build a fire, look around because anywhere you are, there are gonna be fire building materials. We have all these dry leaves here, which will catch on fire easily. We have this dry wood right here. Some of it is already partially burnt from some previous fires that have come through here. We have these smaller sticks as well. All of this you can break apart with your hand. You don't even really need a knife, but this makes some great fire starting of materials if you do in fact need to start a fire. It looks like I got off the trail and now I'm lost. And if I don't figure out a way out of the situation fast, I'm gonna be as dead as that tree over there. So you got off the trail a little bit, you ended up getting lost, what do you do? Well, first of all, don't panic. Now there's a couple of ways to find your way back. If you have your phone still on you and the batteries are charged, hopefully when you left, you dropped a pin at the location of your vehicle so that you could find your way back. But once you drop the pin at your vehicle, just pull up your maps, set it to walking, and click navigate, and just follow your phone back to your car. But let's say you didn't do that, or your battery's dead, what do you do? Well, we gotta pull out our compass. First, all that hiking made me a little bit warm, so it's time to take some water. Staying hydrated and keeping your energy levels up in a situation like this is gonna be crucial. The more dehydrated you get, the more hungry you get, the worse your decisions are gonna be. So stay hydrated, stay full, so that you can continue to make good decisions in a situation like this. Now, I have my compass out, I have it around my neck so that I don't lose it or drop it. The question now is, what do we do? Where do we go? Well, when I left, I know the general direction that I was heading when I headed on the hike. What I wanna do now is I wanna head back in the opposite of that general direction. So on the compass here, you're gonna have some north, west, south, east, and hopefully you also have a dial that rotates. What you wanna do is you want to point the compass in the direction that you wanna go. For me, right now, I need to head back that direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and point my compass in the direction that I wanna go, which is generally gonna be that direction. Now that I know what direction I need to go, I'm gonna take this right arrow here and I'm gonna line it up with my compass, north-south. So I've got the red on the north, I've got the black in the south. Some compasses, you're gonna line that arrow up with the south pointing direction, some north. The point is you just wanna make sure you have the general direction. Now, as I am walking back towards this direction here, what I wanna do is I wanna keep this needle pointed in the same direction. So as I'm walking, I've got the red on the red, the black on the black. If I start walking too far to the right, I know I need to get back on track. If I start walking too far to the left, again, I know that I need to get back on track. 
I want to keep this red and this right in line with what I've set up on here. And if I find that I need to change directions at all, I can simply rotate this to the new direction that I want to go. But as I'm walking, I've got to keep this aligned. Now, obviously, as you're out in the woods, there aren't going to be direct line of sight. I can't just walk straight through these trees here. I don't know what's over there. So I want to try to find some paths, but I also want to try to keep count of my steps. So however far I end up walking too far off in one direction, I want to make sure that as I turn, I can go ahead and correct for that. So there actually is a path behind me. Let's head back up to the trail and then we will get going in the right direction. All right, now that I'm back on the trail, I'm going to pull out my compass. I'm going to get it aimed in the right direction, which this is saying I need to be heading in this. I uh, got it lined up here. I really need to be heading out in that direction over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start walking this way and I'm going to try to find somewhere where that path allows me to curve around and get going in that direction. Okay, we're at an intersection. It's going to allow me to go in the right direction. So what I'm going to do is just consult this one more time. We're going to go ahead and get it facing in the right direction. And now I can see that I need to start going this way. So we'll just aim my body in that direction. The path goes that way. So off I go. I don't even know if I'm on a trail right now or not. All I know is the compass says I've got to get going in that direction, so that's where I'm going to go. All right, we're back to the same wood pile that I found earlier, so I know I'm going in the right direction. But even though this is a landmark and I could probably find my way back from here, being that I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I've been out here a lot longer than I wanted to be, I'm just gonna stick with the compass and trust the compass to get me back to my car. And there we have it. I can finally see my car up there. Ah, we made it back. And that's how you find your way home if you get lost. Don't panic, stay well hydrated, get plenty of food in you, and just rely upon that compass or your cell phone to get you back. Here we are, I'm back in my car. I can get in there, I can rest, I can hydrate, and go home, and finally relax after this much longer than expected hike. I made it out safe, I didn't get lost. Hopefully this video helped you so that you don't get lost either.